live. Brandon, thank you, Brandon Big B, for being with us live. It's good to have you. Hey, it's always good to be here. I appreciate it. Well, listen, I know that uh, I, I want you to catch folks up on the Seth Rich death case and just assume that our listeners, now a lot of our listeners know a lot about this, but there are some that won't really know if we just start talking about Seth Rich, they won't have a clue who we're talking about. But this is huge. This could be history changing, narrative changing, uh, earth shattering in the U.S. government and even in international affairs. This could be huge, but give our folks a synopsis, a brief history, what it was all about, how it began, who this dude is, why his name important and then he died talk about the death and then bring us up to the very latest what's been happening in the headline news well really the mainstream media has stayed away from it you can talk astounding breaking news in the seth rich murder case and what all of this means to um uh politics and 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 the u.s government and and the worldwide narrative yeah well seth rich was a he was a dnc staffer who was murdered uh during the campaign cycle and it was during the time that the WikiLeaks was getting into the hottest and heaviest, <laughs> if you will, uh, when Assange was threatening that he was going to drop information that would change the course of U.S. history. Uh, you know, we have to remember Assange said that if Hillary Clinton won the uh, election, that he was going to release things that he would not release if Donald Trump won the election. Right. So if Assange is telling the truth, he still holds, no telling what kind of information. Right. You know, we, we don't know. So, and, and then, of course, Seth, Seth Rich was murdered uh, just literally within hours of his murder. The D.C. murdered in broad daylight in, in D.C. Shot in the back. And, that's right. Uh, multiple times, if I remember correctly, two or three times in the back. Oh, well, that's got to uh, be a suicide then. Yeah, suicide. If, in yes. D.C., well, if you get shot multiple times yeah. in the back in D.C., that's a suicide. Well, if he would have zipped his own body up in a duffel bag, it would have definitely been a suicide. But <laughs> right. he, he, he didn't do that. So, but with just within hours, uh, the D.C. police ruled that he was the victim of a robbery attempt. Uh, although within a day or so, we find out that absolutely nothing was missing off of his person right. that we could tell. Right. In other words, he had on steel jewelry. He had on uh, his wallet with credit cards, cash, all of that stuff, uh, identification, everything still on him. So, yeah, robbery attempt, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, if it was a robbery attempt, they were looking for something very specific. Something else, yeah. And so when did yeah. this happen? When did this murder happen? It was, it was during the campaign yeah. cycle. I don't have the exact date in front of me, but it was, it was when the campaign was just, sure enough, heating up. Uh, and so bottom line is uh, Julian Assange uh, of WikiLeaks later on, uh, even hinted. Now, he never said the word, Seth Rich was my, uh, my informant on, on, the, on all of the documents out of the uh, DNC. But he did make some comments leading us to believe that Seth Rich may have been his source of information. Um, and so, you know, that, that story was uh, <laughs> reported in the alternative media. Of course, the mainstream media was telling us that uh, the Russians uh, uh, are the ones that hacked the DNC. Isn't it interesting? All the information that came out, m multiple felonies, things that could even go to treason, but the media was covering how Assange got the information, not what the information was. Right. Yeah. Right. So, but, you know, of course, the mainstream narrative was, well, the Russians, the Russians, the Russians. So this whole Seth Rich issue just kind of went away until this week when a private investigator hired by the family uh, goes on a Fox News affiliate and says, listen, I found information on Seth Rich's laptop that uh, says that it shows me that he had contact with Julian Assange. Right, during, right before his murder. Yes, right before his murder, which is what Assange was saying. Yeah. Yes, yes. So now, now, of course, that story was not picked up widely and run with in the mainstream media. Of course. And I, a, good, a good friend of mine called me that day, and he said, what do you make of this? I said, if this story sticks, it changes the course of history. All right, explain, explain that. Yeah. It does away with the Russian narrative. Um, it shows that there <laughs> were insiders within the DNC that knew about the corruption and the outright lawlessness that was going on there. And by the way, if it does away with the Russian narrative, 
then that does away with all of the allegations against Trump and the Trump staff and the special and, investigation. And, and the firing of Comey, and on and on and on and on. And it just makes multiple politicians and big names on both sides of the aisle look like an idiot. Yeah. John McCain. And maybe implicated he, he, in some he, crimes. He, and, and possibly implicated in, in crimes and, and other deceitful things. So, so if this story stuck, like I told my friend, it, it, it could change the course of history, and it could submit Donald Trump's presidency. It could allow him to now move his agenda that he came into office that we were all hoping for. And listen, he has delivered on, on a good bit of that, okay? Um, but just a couple of days later, the same investigator goes back on Fox News and says, well, I really don't have anything that says that Seth Rich communicated with Assange. And we also find out that Seth Rich's family during this point in time uh, went ballistic about all this and, you know, basically said the investigator was crazy and, and on and on. So to me, here's what, I, here's what this brings back memories of. Michael Hastings. Yeah. Explain, Michael, that, explain Michael, that case, yeah. Michael Hastings was a reporter uh, who the last phone call he made in his life was to some close confidants. Uh, that and he said, um, I have information on the president, uh, basically, and they're after me. I'm on the run. And that was and that was President Obama. That was Obama. Just a few hours later, uh, he supposedly uh, is driving at a high rate of speed, loses control of his car, uh, slams into a tree, and dies. But now yeah, traffic ca- traffic camera footage that we got later on uh, did show the car at a high rate of speed. But it showed the car blowing up before the collision with the tree. Yeah. And the engine comes out of the car and winds up 100 yards down the road. Right. And, more like and, a bomb. And, 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 and way back then, we were speculating about uh, remote control of vehicles through all the computer right. systems that are in it. And we were called conspiracy theorists. But here, yep. just within the last year, it's been in mainstream media headlines that guess what? Automobiles can be remote controlled. That's right. You say, well, why does this remind you of the Michael Hastings case? Well, here's why. Because immediately after Hastings died, his wife was all over national news saying things like, and I'm paraphrasing, I don't have quotes, but she was on national news saying, my husband was murdered, there's no way he would do this, he was a safe person, he wasn't this careless. Days later, one or two days later, she was back on the news saying, oh, this was a horrible accident. You know, my, I, I was mistaken. My husband wasn't murdered. Uh-huh. And close friends of the family came out and said she had visits from men in black suits, uh-huh. basically, uh-huh. and was told to shut up. Uh-huh. So you're this suspecting Seth, this that Seth some... Rich, this Seth Rich case think to high heaven of a private investigator who found some information, went on the news, said what he found, and got visits from people that said, shut your mouth. Right, and then can I prove and, that? And a, no, no but I, right. it certainly looks that way. It it seems the same, and and then the and then the the wife of Seth Rich or the family, excuse me, the the family of Seth Rich is a, apparently if if that's what happened, then they were gotten to as well because I mean yeah, they, and, yeah. that's right. And think about it, you know, private investigator just doing his job, right? And he reveals what he may not even realize is history altering information right, that, or maybe right. he thinks he's getting ready to be a national hero right so you know? so did the private investigator retract his story as well yes see that's <laughs> what stinks to high heaven to me that's yes. i mean because this private investigator he's probably in his 50s or 60s i mean he's probably not 20 years rod old wheeler rod wheeler okay the gentleman's name okay yeah. and so so He's got Seth Rich's laptop. He's been doing this deep investigation for over a year now. And so he finds something. He's excited about what he finds. He thinks he's blown the case wide open. He's He's got it. And he goes on a Fox News affiliate and, and makes this announcement. And don't you know that the power brokers of the world, this globalist, re- communist regime, this, this DNC, the, I, I mean, whoever all is involved in this, they heard that, and they just about went out of their minds. And then somebody picked up a phone and called somebody else and said, this guy needs a visit now, fix this. The family needs a visit now, 
fix this. Make it go away. Make it go away. Because this, we've got investigations going on Trump. We, we've got a possibility of impeaching him. They think in their demented minds they're going to take the White House back over. Everything seems in their demented minds to be going their way. And along comes this private investigator who could change the entire narrative. And within days, he and the family are retracting everything. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I was mistaken. And the family saying, yeah, the investigator's an idiot. Really? Really? Yeah. You've you've hired well, him and you've kept him all this time and he wasn't an idiot until he gets a visit. Then he's an idiot. Right. Well, listen, I know we've got to take a break, but you said the word impeachment. Let, let's talk about how those two may be tied together on the other side of the break. Okay, let's do We are going to take a break right now, folks. I, this is why you listen to Freedom Friday, right? Now, Brandon and I are just speculating. We're delivering a lot of facts because the things we're talking about are in the news, and this is going on right now. But now we're just speculating about how these things might tie together based upon past cases and based upon the facts that we have at hand. If we discover later that we're totally wrong about this, guess what we do on Freedom Friday? We will make it right. All right? In the meantime, aren't you glad you're in the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio? Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Uh, in the meantime, uh, as let me see here. I, I, I want to bring Brandon back on, but there was, a, there was an article here. Brandon, uh, hold on a minute. I'm sorry. Let me punch the button. Brandon, you there? I am. Okay, okay. Watch this, Brandon. Let me find this. I had it right I can't here. see you. Okay, you can't see it? Okay, no. hold on, darn. Uh, well, hold on. Oh, okay, here it is. I found it. I found it through my notes here. All right, so Newsweek.com, Brandon, and this is going to go right into where, where we left off, and you're going to talk about the uh, the um, uh, all this impeachment talk, uh, R- Russia, the tr- Trump and the Russians, and now Seth Rich case. All right, Newsweek.com. This was posted just a few hours ago. By the way, this is at FreedomFriday.com Gallops on Facebook. It was posted just a few hours ago. The title of the article is Russian Embassy in London Joins in the Seth Rich Murder Speculation. And listen to this first paragraph. The Russian Embassy in London has joined in speculation surrounding the unsolved murder of Democrat National Committee staffer Seth Rich. On Friday, of course that's today, the embassy tweeted... An image featuring Rich with Hillary Clinton in the background. And the text said, who killed Seth Rich? (laughs) And then it says, the tweet also says that WikiLeaks informer Seth Rich murdered in the U.S., but the mainstream media was so busy accusing Russian hackers to even take notice. Yeah. Or maybe they noticed and they just couldn't talk about it. They couldn't talk about it. It ruins the narrative. It ruins the narrative and ruins the whole plan. And so now, and let's just catch everybody back up. So now, just in the last couple of days, the investigator that had been hired by the family who had Seth Rich's laptop and was investigating this case and interviewing people, just a few days ago, he went on a Fox News affiliate news program and announced that he had discovered on Seth Rich's laptop information which connected him to WikiLeaks information dumping just before he was murdered. And as a matter of fact, he was drawing the parallel conclusion that, of course, Seth Rich was involved in WikiLeaks, and this was a murder that occurred, more than likely tied to that. And within a day or two, the family that hired the investigator came out discrediting all of that, and the investigator then came out changing his mind about what he had said on the news just the day before. You and I smell a huge rat in all of that. And every time we've announced that we've smelled rats in cases like this over the last years, Brandon, every single time we've been proven correct. Maybe not in every detail we speculated upon, but in in the general direction of what we were speculating. And right now you're speculating that all of this stinks to high heaven because if it is linked that Seth Rich was a DNC staffer who was involved in WikiLeaks, it takes the Russians out of it, which ruins the whole narrative against Trump. Now take it from there. That's exactly right. And so, you know, I said what I, what I wanted to try to tie together here was the impeachment talk of Trump and, and the Seth Rich story, uh, making it into the news this week, and how the two may be connected. Because, listen, since the day Donald Trump was elected, we have heard talks of impeachment. From both political parties, yeah. both Democrat and Republican. Yeah. Think about that now. 
since the day of the election, we have heard talks of impeachment. Yes. Well, just this week after this information uh, regarding Seth Rich's laptop came out, we have seen prominent Democrats completely reverse direction on impeachment. Now, hear me. They're not in love with Donald Trump. <laughs> okay. Right. So, but so, so have, something else is going on. Like, yes, we have heard people like Nancy Pelosi mm-hmm. all of a sudden advocating for no impeachment. Well, I don't think that we're ready to do that. I don't think that we have the information to do that. Mm-hmm. Now, I will guarantee you, a month ago, Nancy Pelosi was leading the impeachment bandwagon. Oh, the sure. day after the election, sure. Nancy Pelosi was leading the impeachment bandwagon. So I just believe in my heart of hearts that they, th- these people, or at least they fear that there is information here. And so if you're on this impeachment bandwagon and Trump, like he has so famously done, finds a way to force this information out into the public arena and to prove this to be correct. Now, to my knowledge, Trump has not addressed this yet. Right. Right. But let's just say all of a sudden we get a 2 a.m. tweet from the president. Not out of the question now, is it? Right. <laughs> not out of the question let's, now. Let's say we get a 2 a.m. retreat. We t- re- retweet. Tweet. That's hard to say. Or we tweet. <laughs> we tweet. Uh, uh, retweet from the president of the Russian embassy. Tweet. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so, I do. You, you know, and, and, and Trump has been famous for doing this, for forcing information like this out. And, and he's willing to take the heat up front on so many of these things, right. you know, right. and be called an idiot and a lunatic and a liar. And then weeks later, uh-oh, he's proven right again. So right. I, I hope he'll, I hope that he'll uh, get involved well, in this. Well, listen, this is fascinating that you would say that because um, – I was telling you uh, during the commercial break there on, on online that um, just a few days ago, I was talking to my wife about that uh, when I listen to all this, you know, calling for impeachment, calling for impeachment, calling for special investigation. Now, this call for impeachment has been going on, like you said, since the day of the election. And, right. and, and so what I was going to do while you were talking about that, I went to Google and I put this in Google. Pelosi calls for impeachment of Trump because I was going to investigate very quickly if Pelosi ever actually was involved in calling for his impeachment. Now, I haven't been able to find that yet only because everything got, is her saying that she's not wanting it. Yes. Well, yes. because I couldn't get past the first page of Google. I put in Pelosi right. calls for impeachment of Trump. Now, listen to these titles. All right, here we go. This is from Washington Examiner, Washington Times, RedState.com, Breitbart.com, The Blaze, Free Beacon, Politico, CNN. All right, so just folks, so you'll know, I'm going to read these headlines. Listen to the headlines to back up what Brandon's saying. You just put in in Google right now, Pelosi calls for impeachment of Trump. Now, again, I'm going to go through the pages and see if I can go back far enough to see if she actually did. But here's what it said. Here, All right, here are the titles, Brandon. Pelosi, Democrats need to curse. Curb their enthusiasm over Trump impeachment. Pelosi pushes back on impeachment calls. Without facts, it's just hearsay. Wow, she sounds like a Republican. Nancy (laughs) Pelosi, here's another one. Nancy Pelosi warns Democrats pushing impeachment that they're... And then you have to read the article. So she's warning Democrats, don't do that, don't do that. Uh, Here's one. Nancy Pelosi speaks out on Trump impeachment, and you probably won't believe where she's standing. Here's another one. Nancy Pelosi, Adam Schiff, cite need to gather facts before impeachment proceedings. Nancy Pelosi, we can't impeach Trump just because we dislike him. Wow! (laughs) Here's another one. And that was the blaze. Pelosi on calls for Trump's impeachment. Quote, I don't subscribe to that. End quote. (laughs) And And then Politico, May the 12th, that's a week ago, Democrats escalate talk of Trump's impeachment, and then the article right under it, CNN, but Pelosi doesn't subscribe to the Trump impeachment plan. So, wow. I mean, the media is really on board with this. So so you go ahead and, and give us your take on that, and I'm going to keep looking uh, uh, to see if I can find anything where she actually did call for impeachment. Yeah, and, and, and so, you know, the point being, I just find it interesting that all of a sudden you've got Nancy Pelosi, of all people, saying, well, let's not talk about impeachment. And, I mean, this woman is famous for saying things off the rails. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, she's not uh, 
doesn't appear to be the most stable person that we have in government, let's just say. Right. Um, and, and so now all of a sudden she's talking common sense. Eh, so, something just doesn't feel right about that. And, you know, think, listen, po- politics are so dirty, so warped, and so crooked. There could have already been a deal made, a backroom deal made. Right. Listen, we'll, we'll cut the impeachment talks, but please do not bring up the Seth, let, let's kill the Seth Rich issue. Right. You, 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 and I'm not saying that Donald Trump himself would make that deal, but I think people around him would. Right, right, I right. think people around him would make that deal in a heartbeat. And, uh, again, we don't know. We, we're not sitting here saying that this has happened. Um, but this whole thing just absolutely reeks. Uh, it, 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 it feels like times past. Uh, like I've already made the comparison with the Michael Hastings incident. How many times do we see this where – Immediately when something uh, happens, then, you know, days later, weeks later, months later, the real truth comes out. Right. And it looks like we may be on the verge of getting some real truth about Seth Rich. I hope that that's the case. Right. Uh, Because, again, we have zero evidence has been offered to the American people that Donald Trump or any of his administration colluded with Russia. Right. Zero evidence. So far, zero. Now, uh, now, As a matter of fact, the most evidence points to Seth Rich giving information to Julian Assange. Yeah. Julian Assange has has hinted that that's what happened. Yeah. Uh, an investigator says he has found information on a laptop that says that's what happened. Uh, you have a man supposedly murdered in a robbery with over $2,000 of goods left on him, nothing taken right. that, that was apparent. Right. So either they got exactly what they were looking for, or they weren't there to take anything other than a life. Right, right, right. Well, Brandon, we're going to have to take a time out, and then we've got stuff to talk about on the other side. But before we do, I had to go nine pages into Google before I found everything else is all about how sparkling Nancy Pelosi is, and and she just you know can't imagine uh, impeaching Trump. It took nine pages before I got to some articles in February of 2017, this would have been just right after his um, inauguration, headline uh, from the NTK Network and from uh, Reddit.com, two, two headlines. Nancy Pelosi, we are looking for grounds to impeach President Trump. There you go. <laughs> Here's another there one. You go. Pelosi calls for probe of possible Russian blackmail of Trump. And then looking at the, the, the underneath it on, on Google, it's, it says it, it speaks about impeaching, possibility of impeaching Trump. So if I kept digging, I'm sure I could find them. But she has changed her tune and Google is helping her out because you have to find, you have to go through nine pages because the first nine pages makes Nancy Pelosi looks like a Republican right now. Right, right. And, and the timing of this just all sinks to high heaven. Yeah, it really, really does. Seth Rich, family and investigator, changed their tune instantly because if they went the other way with it, and I'm not saying this is why they changed their tune. I'm, we're just saying, Brandon and I are saying, that if it went the other way, it would have changed the course of history, the entire DNC narrative, and the entire impeach Trump campaign unbelievable times in which we're living. Thank you, Big B. All right, folks, we're going to take a time out. We're going to do this quickly because we want to come back. Brandon and I have some stuff to talk about. Prophecy and where all of this is tied into scriptural principles and and some other things, too. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back in just a moment. Freedom Friday, Carl Gallows. Okay, Brandon Big B, listen, uh, thanks for being on the show today, and we've only got, I don't know, six or seven minutes left, but, you know, of course, you heard the whole show, and, and, and we started off talking about North Korea, In the news, NBC News headlines today, North Korea has finally launched a missile that they said, quote, really works. And it everything worked about it, everything. And they claim it is a medium, long-range ballistic rocket that can carry, quote, a heavy nuclear warhead, which is what they've been wanting. Now, we just found out last week that they are in they are in cahoots now with and in alignment with Iran and their nuclear program and they're assisting each other but we know that Russia is tied deeply to Iran and their nuclear program we know that Obama has propped it all up with the Iranian nuclear deal we know that right now as we're speaking Iran has a presidential election going on in which a hard right president may go into office who is hooked up with the ayatollahs who are always screaming for the nuclear annihilation of Israel, 
So we've got all that going on. We know that Russia is in the Middle East, in Syria, with military troops. We know that America just struck some uh, uh, Russian-backed uh, uh, troops just, just today or yesterday with a launch. Uh, we know that China is in the Middle East, giving thousands of troops to Russia. We know that China is connected to North Korea deeply. So you've got this circle of connection between North Korea, China, Russia, Iran, nukes, nuclear programs. And then you've got Turkey in the midst of it all that's falling into an Islamic caliphate. And, they're, and, and Russia and China are located in Syria, which is falling apart into an irreconcilable civil war. Israel sitting there in the midst of it. Trump is getting ready to go to Saudi Arabia, then to Israel. And in the meantime, the DNC is trying to impeach Trump and changing the Seth Rich narrative. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, man, Brandon, I'm going to hush and let you just t tie it all together. But we're living in some potentially precarious times, and I believe very prophetic times. Brandon, go ahead. No, we definitely are uh, 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 what appears to be living in. Uh, like you said, very prophetic times, and we just see this alignment of nations, and it's incredible because for hundreds of years, uh, you know, scholars have speculated that somehow these ancient biblical uh, nations and territories uh, and tribal nations would lead up to China and Russia and, and Turkey uh, all being uh, colluding together. And, of course, Iran, you know, is, is named by name in the Bible as Persia. Uh, and then these northern African nations, uh, Ethiopia, which is represented as Kush, and, uh, you know, in the land of Put, which China now has yeah. a naval, naval base and their only military installation not on Chinese soil, uh, uh, just opened in the last 16, 18 months. And so we're seeing all of these things happen, and not only are we watching them happen, but I think this is, well, there's two things that makes them very interesting. Number one is the speed at which they're happening. It, 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 this is not developing anymore, uh, you know, well, it may be 10 years from now before this happens. No, this stuff could happen tomorrow. Uh, so we're seeing this happen at breakneck speed. And then also um, it's the fact that, and we talk about this with biblical prophecy, what makes something prophetic? That it is unprecedented. Right. It has never happened before. We have never seen this before. We have never seen this on this scale before. Well, we have never seen this before. <laughs> we have never seen all of these nations in the Middle East doing business at one time, and on top of that, doing business together Yeah, at one time. Never ne never have we seen this before. It is unprecedented. And then, again, if, like I say, if you factor in the speed at which this is happening, absolutely incredible. Folks, just keep your eyes on Jesus being the Word, man. Pay attention to what's going on. Read the Bible in one hand and, and read your news, watch your news, whatever you do in the other. And just keep a watchful eye out yeah. and be the salt and the light and with a sense of urgency. Thank you. That's a good word, Brandon. That's a good word, Brandon Bigby. We'll see you next week. And, folks, we're on our way out of here. Boy, these two hours flew by. At least they did for me. I hope they did for you, too. I hope it was that interesting and informative. And that's why you listen to Freedom Friday.